So shalom everyone, welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger and this time within the very interesting subject of trying to track the site that relates to the aftermath of the resurrection of Jesus um, we have expanded the term for the name of this series following Jesus in Jerusalem, it's now following Jesus in Jerusalem and its vicinity and in the previous chapter I reviewed the site known as Emmaus Nicopolis. Let's first re uh, rem uh, remind ourselves what the text tells us. The text tells us that after his resurrection he appears to Mary Magdalene and then two men were walking towards Emmaus when Jesus appears among them. They tell him, have you heard of, of this story, this amazing story of the person who resurrected from the dead and so on. And he starts chatting with them, but he doesn't tell them that it's him. And when they reach finally the city, they invite him for a meal. And when he cuts the bread, their eyes were open. It is him, but he disappears. I'm not going to refer to all the theological questions and, and reviews of this event. I'm an archaeologist. I am trying to track, if possible, any uh, archaeological and uh, geographical components that could illuminate, that could help us understand better uh, this story and maybe, maybe the actual place where it happened. Now, Emmaus Nicopolis is a good candidate in the sense that uh, it, there was a major city there. In fact, there was an Arab village until 1967 by the name of Imawas. It preserved the name. And although the name did change in the Byzantine period to Nicopolis, if Zebius and other sources tell us Nicopolis is previously a mouse, it is the place where it happened. But there is one problem when we've reviewed that, the distance. The Gospel of Luke telling us about this story tells us the distance from Jerusalem there, to a mouse Nicopolis there. <clears throat> uh, the Gospel of Luke tells us that it was hexacontastadia, about uh, seven miles. The actual distance from Jerusalem to Mount Nicopolis is more than double. There's something that just doesn't fit. Um, <clears throat> so that led at least certain figures in the Middle Ages to suggest an alternative site, to speculate that maybe it is in a different location and that is where I'm here right now. I'm in the heart of the Arab village of Abu Ghosh, but behind me is an amazingly preserved Crusader era church that even its interior decorations, its frescoes, are in very good condition. But first of all, how, what makes us think that this is the place? It is the Crusader era pilgrims who started suggesting that a mouse should be sought in the area of Abu Ghosh, especially the detailed pilgrim of, uh, uh, by the name of Theodoric, who comes here in 1172. He is the first one to suggest that Emmaus should be sought after over here, and others follow that tradition. One thing he's very right, the distance. This site is indeed 60 stadia from Jerusalem. This site is, is about seven miles. But what does archaeology have to say? What does the interior design, the decoration, do they contain any imagery relating to the story of a mouse? And is there any archaeological remains? I'm not asking to find the actual table where they had that meal, but at least first century remains. Huh. So let's start with the church. I hope it's still open because they're closing in like 30 minutes. And if there's a mass. You can't really record, but I think we're good. Okay, here we go. Let me also switch to my better lens. I wish there would be more light here, but it is what it is. Okay, first of all, I'll just pan to show you what an amazing building this is. Okay, look at the design, even when it's pitch dark. This is all preserved from Crusader era. It's an 800-year-old Romanesque style church. Okay, 
And in the 19th century, when the uh, Christians reclaimed this property and started cleaning it, they were amazed to discover wall paintings like the one over here. Okay? But what do they show? Hold on, let me just improve my position here. Okay. Here we have two figures. The faces are all vandalized. It's iconoclasm, probably done by the Muslims when taking over this place. But you can clearly see uh, a figure crucified in an interesting way, by the way. He's not nailed. He is tied in another figure on the left side. The person in the middle is missing, but the fact that the family is grieving for him, and, and it is a Christian church, it's pretty clear that this is the subject of the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, you can <clears throat> uh, see the family, including Mary, Mary Magdalene there, and the two thieves on both sides. There's even a little medieval anti-Semitic note there. Let me zoom in. No, you can't really see the details, but this is like the church pushing away the synagogue. The name synagogue appears there above. Uh, it's all fantastic imagery for the subject of crusader art, but this is not related to the story of the mills. And the same thing can be said also about the imagery here, which is showing in a very partial way uh, probably a saint on a galloping horse. Maybe St. George, I don't know. But again, not related to a mouse. They walked. They were not on a horse on their way to a mouse. The apse over here, a bit lit, is showing us three figures. One, two, and three. But these are the patriarchs, as the style and the text indicates. Okay, again, not related to a mouse. Now let's go to the other side. Maybe the imagery on the opposite side will give us more information. Well, it will, <laughs> but not what I, we were hoping to find. Here we have an image of the Koimosis de Theotokos, the, the falling asleep of Mary, uh, a theme that is not recorded in the New Testament, but it's a very sound Christian tradition. I will review it in my next chapters, going back to Jerusalem. Uh, the, the, the falling of the sleep of Mary is maybe the head here is all that's left of it. The figures mourning over her end ha have had their faces defaced, as well as Jesus, who is standing there waiting to receive her after her falling asleep. A fascinating topic. There are certain traditions in Jerusalem about this. Very interesting, not related to a mouse. <laughs> and the same thing can also be said about this. Again, a saint, a standing figure, and a saint. Uh, the, the edge of the horse is pretty much the only visible part of it, but it's maybe, again, St. George or a more local medieval saint. Who knows? Uh, the imagery appearing here on the top might seem at first uh, to be the subject of a mouse, but it's not. You see the disciples over here. And this is really his appearance, uh, or combined with the Last Supper, as indeed the site in Jerusalem combines the two. Again, not a mouse. And the main apse, where you would expect maybe the main subject to appear, is clearly not representing this. Hold on, let me fix my angle here. Maybe get a better close-up. It's in pretty bad condition, but it's pretty clear that it is the subject of the deesis, the resurrection. It's just not what we are looking for. Now, there are two more figures appearing on the columns here on both sides. Okay, the figure on the left is clearly identified as John the Baptist. The figure on the right looks like a priest. So some say it's Zachariah the father of John the Baptist, and others suggest that this is Aaron, the high priest. All of a sudden, we have here a biblical figure, and this led some scholars to link the church to the memory of where the Ark of the Covenant rested. A fascinating topic by itself, which I have reviewed in my previous series, The Stations of the Ark, 
and I recommend you to review them again. Uh, but again, one thing that it does not relate to is a mouse. So is this a church commemorating the site and the event? At least the decorations, the frescoes, do not relate to this. And even more confusing is the crypt beneath the church, which is also original to the time of the Crusaders. Let me turn on the light here. Oh, okay, the lower floor is lit up, but even if it's light, <laughs> even if it's lit, it doesn't mean it will provide the answer. It will actually only add more mystery to the site. Okay, when, when you zoom out, you can see a beautiful, typical Romanesque style to this church, but at its bottom, this crypt, I mean, but at its bottom, Uh, well, what do we have here? Two stairways on both sides that are leading not to any relics or anything that could be linked to the narrative of the mouse, but to, you see it? A little spring. <laughs> this is simply water. And having the two flight of steps, I'm suspecting that this may have been not just a functional source of water, but maybe a baptismal font of some sort. Whatever it is, it's not relating in any way to this narrative of a mouse because water is not mentioned there. So what is going on here? Can this site, can this church be related to the story of a mouse? Well, so far, there's nothing that I can link it to. Now let me get out and review a few more interesting finds that are presented at the entrance. Ooh, back to the sun, or semi-sun. <laughs> um, what a beautiful spot it is today, I must say. This, this side is so serene, it's so nice and calm, especially when you consider all the traffic the old road to Jerusalem used to pass right here, and the village of Abu Ghosh today is very known for its food places, especially for its uh, hummus uh, restaurants. <laughs> if only the Gospel of Emmaus would say that Jesus cut the bread and dipped it in some hummus, <laughs> no one would question it. It must have happened in Abu Ghosh. <laughs> if only the word hummus would be mentioned in that story. But anyway, let's get serious here. The archaeology of the courtyard here is obviously not showing any architecture in its original position, but it does have here very, very interesting features like this inscription. This stone reused by the Crusaders is containing a tabula ansata, a frame for uh, an inscription which is bragging the completion of some project by the Vexilato an engineering unit of the Leg Deca Fretensis, the notorious 10th uh, 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 legion, Fretensis was its nickname, was actually one of the main forces for uh, destroying Jerusalem, knocking down its Jewish temple, and later staying in the city and its uh, vicinity just to make sure those Jews who dared rebel against the Roman Empire won't even think of, forget, rebuilding the temple, even getting close to Jerusalem. So it's a very interesting topic again, not related to a mouse. And here we have a coffin, a sarcophagus. Aha! Uh -huh. Were sarcophagi used also in the first century? Well, the answer is yes. The, some Jews did bury their dead in sarcophagi, but they were actually extremely rare. And it's more common in, in Roman times, so I would connect this specific sarcophagus actually to Roman imperial time, not to independent Jewish times, especially because the decoration here, which seems at first to be a, like a Jewish Rosetta decoration, it's not the typical one. This one has four palettes. The Jewish Rosetta, 
that appears on coffins and in other art for medias is usually with <coughs> sorry with six palettes so again we are not getting close to uh, any find that could associate this site with a mouse except for the distance same thing can be said about this Corinthian capital for instance this is a typical Corinthian capital of late Roman maybe early Byzantine not first century same thing can be said about this capital which actually was later recycled by the Muslims look they inscribed a an inscription over it when it just turned into like a face of an inscription but either way it is none of it not the first or the second stages first century uh, we also have here some components of olive presses uh, and they could be really dated to very different periods that's not enough to indicate anything but there's one more feature here that I like a milestone a traffic sign from Roman times okay and milestones for one thing are very rare uh, in the days of Jesus they are more uh, common after the destruction of Jerusalem and Romanizing the land they also the Romans also fixed the roads and indeed the little bit of what can be read here seems to refer this milestone to Hadrian okay Hadrian and Trianus it's all second century none of this is the time of Jesus none of this can be connected in any way to a mouse so to sum up you know where is the mouse maybe there's a local tradition here by the monks maintaining the place maybe there was a tradition here by the Crusaders but the evidence of the church the evidence of archaeology in general doesn't seem to fit so where is it well if you're still not confused enough it turns out that scholarship suggested two maybe even three more locations for that elusive side of a mouse and the next site that I'm going to review is going to be down in the valley below between Abu Ghosh and Jerusalem wait for that because you will find out that it contains some very interesting surprising finds but it's got its also its problems so till next time I hope you've enjoyed this review make sure to click the subscribe the likes the comments everything to get the alerts for when my next content uh, airs for those who have been supporting me thank you so much it's still uh, a land empty of tourists yes I am getting orders for the spring for the summer but uh, the land is still quite empty if you are considering coming to the Holy Land this is the time the skies are open vaccination proof and PCR and you're in and and it's empty there are almost no tourists here right now so make use of this opportunity and um, until next time Shalom from Abu Ghosh